Hello, everyone. This is the greatest travel podcast in the universe. On YouTube recently, um, a troll called it the world's shittiest podcast. So either way, we're at the top, I would say, of something, whether it's like the worst or the best. So I'm happy with that. And I'm with a special guest, the most special guest. No offense, Jackson. Brittany Rizzo, Miss Rizzo on Instagram, Miss underscore Rizzo, who is a actress, blogger, influencer, <laughs> pickleball semi-pro, and like supermodel? Is like, is, are you at supermodel? Like, where does a supermodel and a model go? You're not, I right? think once you're on a boat. <laughs> not yet, yeah. we're getting there. <laughs> All right, all right. Because, like, technically, I could be, like, a model, and you're much higher than that. So there's got to be – you're definitely, like, a close to the super <laughs> than a regular model. But, yeah, well, thanks for coming. Um, <laughs> also, to tell you a quick bit about Miss Rizzo, I would say I only know, like, three people, and I don't even know if I know three people that are more traveled than me. And Rizzo blows me out of the park. She's like the most traveled human being I know. So if you think I'm an expert, which I'm not, I just fake it. Um, Brittany, she she's the one we're going to get all the good info from. She's the smartest traveler I know. So thanks for coming on. I'll let you talk for a second. But tell us, uh, <laughs> what do you have coming up next? Where were you just? Give us like a quick, how did you get into travel? Maybe that start there. How did you get into traveling? How I got into traveling, I was 21, so like 11 years ago. Um, oh. I took my first flight, international, yeah, not to like put my age out there. <laughs> uh, I took my first trip and it was like game over. Like once you go to Thailand as your first country, it's there's just no going back. Like I think everybody that's gone to Thailand can speak to that. It's just a whole new world. So that's what gave me the travel bug. And then from there on, I mean, you know, I was 21. I had no real obligations, nothing like tying me back home. I was just like, wanted to see everywhere and anywhere as, like as often as I could. So that's what sparked it. <laughs> I was going to ask you actually what gave you the travel bug. So it was that first trip to Thailand and then it just has been ever since. And you go obscure places. Ever since. And then the more. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Yeah, exactly. I really now I love to go places that people do not talk about. Or they have to go look at a map like, wait, where is that at? Um, because there are so many of those countries out there. And it's great to visit, you know, the very common places. But I love the places that people don't talk about. Yeah, when we met, like, I don't know, a year and a half, two years ago. And we were met at, like, some sort of tourism acting model shoot thing. And I was like, oh, people were asking me, like, what did you do? And I was like, oh, what do you do? And you're like, oh, I just came back from Omen. Oman? Oman, sorry. And I was like, what? I've never heard of anyone go there in my entire life. So that was incredible. And it look, your pictures look beautiful. And uh, I was going to ask you, what are like your two, three favorite unique places you think people should travel? Like, what are your favorite two or three that are off the beaten path a little? Mm, uh, the one that's sticking out like immediately to me is Sri Lanka. Uh, hands down, like, an absolutely all around amazing country, very far. It was the hardest place for me to travel to. I mean, it's completely on the other side of the world, you know? So the travel time, just the logistics of getting to and from were the hardest part in all my travels. Um, but once you're there and you settle into the time zone and uh, the way the country is, hustle and bustle, you it's just such a beautiful place. It's super affordable. There's beaches, it's very diverse, there's mountains. So they have it all. And I think people hear Sri Lanka and they're just like, where? And like, what does that even look like? <laughs> so you did three weeks and you just said Sri Lanka. Did you do like a lead in country or you kind of just flew in Sri Lanka and that, then out for the three weeks? Um, I intended to do India right after and because they are very close to each other and I was connecting back through India and I had the Indian visa. Uh, but when I got there, it was a lot of chaos at the airport and they actually wouldn't let me out of the airport um so i just surrendered and went home <laughs> so <laughs> that's another story 
That happened to me uh, in India. They let me out, but they couldn't. So I'm can, yeah, I'm Canadian, but I lived in the U.S. And so I forget what it was, but to your point, there was some sort of obscure rule that I, they couldn't figure out that I was Canadian. So the rules didn't apply to where I was going and X, Y, Z. So it was just a nightmare at customs in India. But Okay, I'm glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> yeah. I also say it's like the greatest place. It's the worst place on earth, but it's also the greatest place you have to go because it's just, like you said, you saw the airport and it was just chaos. Like the entire country is madness. Yeah. And I'm actually headed there next month. <laughs> so. Wow. That'd be great. <laughs> it's definitely yeah, unique. Like it's such a culture. Like... Exactly. I think you really hmm. need time to like settle in the, the culture. Yeah. What's it like being a woman traveling alone to a place like India or I'm sure other Middle, Middle Eastern countries, other, ever, other places you've been? Has it been tough or like do you have precautions, advice for women out there? I think for me, I absolutely thrive when I travel alone. <laughs> I love traveling alone and I think everyone is so taken back by it um, as far as like safety and just like being alone i think people are like a little hesitant to go out to eat by themselves or do these kind of things by yourself so when you travel so far across the world and you do this people are literally just you know mind blown at times and for me i've just been doing it so long that it's not anything different for me but of course there are precautions that you have to take especially being a woman but it's nothing i mean there are a little heightened precautions but i do the same things i would do you know here in arizona or back home in the US. So it's just being a little bit more smarter, like following your gut and certain things like, you know, dressing down, uh, not having a bunch of jewelry on, things like that. Yeah. And something happened to you. Was it Guatemala where you had like, I'm sure there's been other sketchy times, but were you feeling a little unsafe in Guatemala from like a, you were in like an area that maybe it was late at night? You. I'm you were supposed I'm to catch a boat. It wasn't Guatemala. Yeah, so I know what you're talking about. Um, huh. I was going to Roatan in Honduras. So I had left. Ah, yes. I was traveling Central America by myself. And I was like, hey, I want to go to Roatan. I want to get dive certified. So what had happened was I ended up in the mainland of Honduras. And transportation got super messed up. So missed like my original transportation to the island and how to stay in the mainland but it was like a bus involved and like staying on the mainland and it was just it was uncomfortable because I looked like a tourist I looked like you know I was alone um I have a bunch of camera gear on me which you have to worry about in case someone does target you like well that's thousands of dollars alone on my back so mm -hmm. I just did my best to stay in a very public place until I got into a taxi and into a hotel, a safe hotel, and then eventually carried on to the island the next day. Wow. Do you, your parents, how long, how long did it take them to be comfortable with you doing all this? I honestly, it would be, it would be a question for me to ask them. I feel like I've been <laughs> doing this for so long that they honestly stopped asking when and where I'm going. And they kind of just follow along on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My uh, my mom always tells me to stay safe every time, and I'm a big, ch a decent chunk older than you, and I'm also a male traveling alone. Where uh, if I had, like, I'm just scared. This is sexist, but I have a daughter. If I had a daughter, I'd be terrified every single day. So I couldn't imagine. I'm sure they know they trust you, but it's scary. Yeah, they know. Yeah, it is scary. It is very scary. And again, it's just about like being aware with everything you do, or if. You know, I was just in Tunisia and I had just one encounter of a guy who was maybe intoxicated. And it's just like knowing how to act in those situations and maybe not like make him tick or like not do something that will, you know, elevate how he's feeling or what he's saying. And so, again, staying in a public place, like making sure you're around people and things like that. Um, this stuff happens every day, everywhere you're at, even in the U.S. So it's not anything too out of the ordinary in other countries just because it's another country. Yeah, I agree with you. I always tell people who are frightened about traveling. I'm like, I'm more scared walking like six blocks south of me, like in the Biltmore, than traveling yeah. to half the countries I've gone to or most of the countries. I'm like, that's scary down there. I'm good in Guatemala, right. but 
Um, <laughs> so the segue for India and you traveling alone was a question I had, but back to what are another couple places that are like unique that you would tell people to go to aside from Sri Lanka? Uh, over the summer, I went to Albania by myself and I had the best time ever. I had seen it popping up, um, you know, on my social media more so the last like two years. And I knew this summer that I was like, I'm going there. You know, I really wanted to experience it before it grew in the tourism aspect. And so it still was like a blast from the past. And I really enjoyed that. There was a lot of like fundamental things that aren't up to date yet, like most places that you travel to and especially being in Europe. Um, but it was, I think that was like the most enjoyable part was like you, you had to have cash to like pay for hotels, like, which is definitely an inconvenience when you're used to like using your card for everything yeah. and, you know, just being able to work on the fly. But I really enjoyed that they just are s still back there as far as tourism. So less crowds and gorgeous, I mean, gorgeous scenery everywhere you look, like from the Alps down to the whole coast is just next level beauty. So I really highly recommend that everyone adds Albania to their list because it's like Croatia you know, 15 years ago. That's funny. You like say everything I kind of say, and I think we have the same concept of just like not traveling where it's over traveled, like going new places such as Albania or, you know, I think it's so important because even an easy example is Tulum. Tulum 20 years ago was amazing. Now it's just, yeah, not Las Vegas, but you know, it's just chaos. It's like and, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Scott said on the beach, a hundred percent. So I, I'm glad you said that. Definitely going to places that won't be the same in 15 years and are just like tucked away and lesser known. Uh, I'm going actually, you went to Guatemala last year at some point. Over the summer I went and it was my yeah. favorite country of the summer. Yeah, I'm going in a week and a half. So that's exciting. Oh my God. I'll have, I'll have to, to give you all the recs. Yes, please do. Um, <laughs> All right, so those are two good ones. And then give me another place that's kind of people should travel to that they might not think of. Yeah. Um, I feel like everyone talks about Colombia more than ever lately, um, but I still find people are hesitant. I think they like relate danger to Colombia. And I've been there now over the summer. I went, I've been five times now. And it's still one of my favorite countries. I just think it has something for everyone. It's really inexpensive. The culture is so warm. Um, and yeah, I think it needs to be on everyone's list no matter what. There's, I, don't feel, I don't feel danger there at all. What's your favorite couple cities there? Uh, I really love Medellin. It's like an eternal spring there. So we have the best weather year round it's in the mountains so it's stunning like everywhere you look it's total city life but they have it all um and then i really love cartagena which is like the beach coastal town and it is just so colorful there's so many like excursions that you can do to all the islands like around and you just can't beat the food there either so i yeah those are my top two i would say all right nice uh a question because you travel so much Where's your stance on like, I need money to live, but also fuck it. Like I want to live. I, uh, I feel like that's a hard, cause everyone, you know, I'm sure you have tons of friends. Oh, I want to go, but I don't have the money. It's like, I don't know. I tell people put, as long as you can pay it back, like $10,000 on a credit card, you've made, you will make $10,000 a hundred, a thousand, 10,000 times in your life when will you be able to just pick up and go to XYZ? Like, how do you kind of balance that? I don't know if I have a balance. <laughs> I feel like I'm the wrong person to ask because I'm usually on like the effort side. Uh, I'm just kidding. But I do, I know responsibilities and of course, you know, uh, bills have to be paid and we do have to maintain our lifestyle wherever you live. And I get that, but I do believe there's so many ways to afford travel and people think it costs just thousands and thousands of dollars to get by. And like, there's so many budget, you know, hotels, hostels, um, Airbnbs. If you split with people, there's, um, travel credit cards, which is like a, the number one travel hack that you guys can really incorporate to travel. And I think, um, people are afraid to either like opening another credit card or they don't really understand how it works. 
um, and how to like divvy out the points. And then think about your daily lifestyle. Like what do you spend? How much are you spending when you go out to the bars? Like how much are you spending when you eat out all week? You know, this is easily like if you cut back on that, that's how you afford travel, literally. So I think it's priority. You know, if you want to make travel priority, you got to you got to look at your budget overall and see like, what can you cut back on? Yeah, absolutely. That we're hitting every, every everything we think is the same. So I'm selling my son's tickets to watch Oklahoma city. And the second best player in the league right now is Canadian plays for Oklahoma city, but I go to Guatemala the next day. So I'm like, I probably should sell those tickets and save it for like a thousand dollars in Guatemala goes a long yeah. ways over a thousand dollars to watch a basketball game. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Um, and I'm all for experiences, but there's, there's something about experiences in another country versus like, you know, another basketball game. I don't know. I can't really. <laughs> no, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, are there any other like travel tips or hacks that you absolutely love and everyone has to know? Also include the eSIM card, which you've been talking about recently. But uh, yeah, what do you have? Yeah, so I was actually going to say I just posted yesterday about having an eSIM, which when I was just in uh, Tunisia a few weeks ago, uh, I was the first time I've used an eSIM. And I was like blown away by the affordability and just the convenience of being able to like have an app on your phone and reload it if you run out of data and not having to like, you know, call your cell phone provider and then like sit on the phone and like wait for them to send you a link and like, and it just at the end of the day, it was just more expensive for me to pay $35 for 10 gigabytes versus $10 for 10 gigabytes. You know what I mean? So yeah. I am totally pro eSIM. It's having an electronic SIM um, versus the old ways where we would purchase a SIM card in the country and then put it in your phone. Then you have this foreign phone number and it's just like, it's just a mess. So yeah. I'm all about the eSIMs right now. I'm about travel credit cards of course and then a few other things i would say is google maps is my number one back home and traveling and i think that a lot of people don't realize that you can download the map offline so if you don't have service or if you just don't have good service um if you download the map ahead of time you can literally get to anywhere and everywhere you need to go without service and so i love google maps when i'm traveling especially saving restaurants and saving you know uh places to go out or attractions or whatever um and then of course like uh searching for flights searching in the incognito browser so that they're not tracking you searching flights and then raise the prices on you all good ones yeah and what's nice too about the offline google maps is even like trails like there will be hiking trails it sometimes you can't even see on the actual maps that once you download it it kind of pops up there so I was, love that in Costa Rica. I found some random trails that weren't easy to find and Google Maps had them. Yes, what? like people that I see using Apple Maps, put it down. <laughs> <laughs> My car only works with Apple. Like Google Maps works, but it doesn't, fu the functionality, so it really grinds my gears. Um, what search engines yeah, you do you get use? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> by by Beaver. Uh, get out of here. Love. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta go. Yeah. Um, I love Google. <laughs> Sorry. Bro. Yeah. Um, where was I? <laughs> Google Flights. Google Flights is amazing. They you can do search trackers and like price drops, so it'll notify you if the flight price is high or low or it's gonna drop. Um, so I really love Google Flights, and it does pretty much show you all the airlines. I think except for Southwest because they're just doing their own thing. Um, and then Hopper is another one that's kind of the same thing, but it's an app. And um, other than that, like I think people want to hear that the answer is one specific website, but it's really like shopping around. It's just like when you go to like multiple car dealerships or if you, you know, you cross reference your references. And so um, it's just about pulling up a few browsers and just seeing which one has a better deal maybe that day or that week. Yeah. And what Brittany was saying, make sure you use incognito browsers. So then you're not being tracked and cookied by the airlines who then see that you're where you want to go is in demand and then they increase prices and that sort of thing. So great. And then uh, what I love about Google flights and like my favorite thing to do when I was a kid was take the globe and then you just spin it. Remember that game? And then you just like press the button and you're like, that's where I'm going to live or that's where yeah. I'm going to go. 
So Google Flights has this explore feature yeah. where you literally just put in where you are and then a date. And then you just open up and it'll show you the prices to everywhere in the world. And I'm like, I've, I've chosen where I'm going to go yep. off that sometimes. I'm like, oh, there's a cheap flight to Columbia. And I went. It's, I don't know. I love it. Exactly. Yeah. When <laughs> back on the eSIM, so if people don't know, so you download an app and then you pay on the app and you keep your same number. Is that correct? So I make sure people really use this. Yeah. Resource. So what you do is yeah. So there's a few different brands out there. Um, I use uh, an eSIM called USIMS. So you just download the app and then it'll walk you through the steps of purchasing the eSIM e card. And then what you'll do in your settings is you keep your phone number because you're going to leave like phone calls pulling from your phone number, but you're going to change your cellular data to pull from the eSIM. So that way you keep your same phone number, but everything it's using data wise is pulling from your eSIM. It's amazing. So basically, <laughs> yeah, you'll have like an option that says cellular, cellular data and you just pick that option sort of thing. It'll pop up. Exactly. Love that. Yeah, I think a lot of people will use that. I need that all the time. I feel like sometimes I, I would just hate regular SIM cards and I would just pay the $10 a day in the country I was in and that adds up over three exactly. weeks. Um, a it random really question does. I had. <laughs> oh, um, question I had because I know you're very health conscious. I feel like I go to most other countries and I eat the same or more, but I lose weight, especially in my midsection. Do you think, and I feel like I'm kind of making the, I know kind of what the answer is, but just how much better and fresh food is in other countries versus like the United States because it's so mass produced and chemicals and that sort of thing. I feel like I instantly get home and I'm twice as bloated as when I ate anything and everything in Costa Rica. Honestly, it's a topic that I think we will battle for a long time. And it is really frustrating being American and getting to go to all these places. You know, I traveled for four months over the summer and did not come home one time. And so, you know, eating all, and I love to indulge in the local food and stuff like that. So I, I try not to hold back too much. Um, and so to come back and I was like more fit than before I left and more fit is like, you know, your own body. And so, yeah. um, back after I just ate whatever I wanted and didn't necessarily work out every single day. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really, it's hard. It's hard to know that the food pretty much everywhere else does appear to be cleaner than back home. And that's, that's like a hard pill to swallow. I don't know. I don't know what we do about it here, but it is hard to know that wherever you go, it's like, just feels cleaner. It's so wild. Yeah. Cause like, obviously you don't have your same routine of like working out and all that kind of stuff. We're here, me and you, from what we know each other, like we do some sort of activity at least six days a week here, gym four or five days a week hard. And it's like, my body's worse than when it was in Costa Rica when I barely worked out and I ate all the food under the sun. <laughs> I think that just means that we have to keep traveling. <laughs> I agree. That's it. it. We lose weight by traveling. That's a new travel hack. A weight loss hack. Okay. <laughs> um, so we both love food on our travels. I have a few of like my favorite meals I've ever had that come right to mind instantly. Do you have any like two to three times where, where there's the ambiance, the location, the lead up? That's just like meals that, wow, that was mm -hmm. the greatest time experience I've ever had. Ooh, this is so tough. Um, <laughs> I think I'm obsessed with Mediterranean food overall. So when I was in Albania, you're going to get that Mediterranean flair. Um, in Tunisia, there was tons of Mediterranean food. So anywhere around the water, I'm pretty much good. Like I'm in heaven because there's seafood and, you know, just fresh, like, salads, all that. So I'm good anywhere. There's pretty much an ocean. <laughs> nice. Are you, your last name's Italian, I would say, right? Are you Italian or what's your ethnicity? Yeah. So my dad's side is from Sicily and my mother and my mom's side was born in Portugal. Oh, wow. That's a nice little mix. Yes. Great. We have a big Italian and Portuguese uh, listenership. So they'll be, they'll be happy to watch. We love that. I'm working yeah. on getting my dual citizenship right now for Portugal. Super oh, excited wow. about that so that I don't have to come back home. <laughs> I'm just yeah, kidding. I definitely want to go to 
Portugal's like on my top list for Europe. I, I kind of want to go this summer if I can make it because it looks incredible. I also heard, is it like the most affordable European country for the most part? Like it's crazy cheap, right? Compared to most Europe. Let's just talk about it because yeah. I was going to let you guys know that it's one of my like highly recommended favorite countries for everybody. So I absolutely adore Portugal, not just because my family's from there, but it is one of the most affordable, cost-effective places to live um, and travel to. It's also super diverse. Uh, we have some great surf, you know, uh, surf towns. We have, you know, up north, great food, great wine, of course. There's the Azores and Madeira. The islands are just next level, like out of the world views and so i think it really just has something for everyone there on top of just being affordable i think is really nice when you you know you hit the european countries yeah it definitely is at the top of my list for the top places to go in europe so i, I definitely want to go so i'm glad you told everyone that they should um yeah i guess i nailed you with a bunch of questions do you have like a a favorite story or crazy story you want to uh to tell oh i oh, feel man, like that on one spot. <laughs> i want to know that one no um uh, i oh i have so many <laughs> what's like your favorite travel um, experience like i know you did the the thing in guatemala the women's retreat you did the surf camp in portugal is there anything that was just like an overall wow experience week or half week or whatever yeah, honestly, going back to Portugal, that surf camp was hands down one of the like most memorable trips. I, I just I could never forget the people that I met along the way, the experiences, the surf camp in general, like who says they get to go learn how to surf and surf skate, which is like skateboarding and eat just home cooked meals cooked every day by a chef uh, with, you know, 16 other people. It was out of the world in the most stunning location, you know down south in the Algarve and uh it is one for the books and uh just to say there the camp is called Tiny Whale and if you have any interest in learning how to surf you've got to check them out it was like a one of a kind trip for sure nice definitely have to check that out um what do you have planned for this year what are the next travels for Miss Rizzo got a few things in the works um but for sure starting with India next um, next month. And then I'm trying to go to all the stands. So like Pakistan, Uzbekistan, all of those, which again is very far and not talked about. So I'm working on a few things to get myself over there. And then of course, like everyone, the craze of Iceland still can't believe I haven't been to Iceland yet. So I've got a few things that I'm trying to get set in stone before <laughs> I say. Nice. Well, it's all good. And then back to the traveling alone, everyone. She mentioned it earlier, but I think traveling alone, it's just you can do whatever you want, whenever you want. Uh, I think as we both know, everyone wants to travel with you, I'm sure. And then you're like, all right, here's a ticket. And they're like, then they don't buy it. They're like, oh, this. And everyone has an excuse. So I think Miss Rizzo, Miss exactly. Rizzo and I both are like, I'm going here. If you want to come, you can meet up. If not, see you later. So. So I, I travel alone, I everyone. I, like, I stopped, yeah, I stopped telling people I was even going anywhere because they just <laughs> wouldn't go. Like, yeah, you know? it gets so annoying. Like, oh, I'm coming, I'm coming. All right, cool. Oh, I'm not coming. All yeah, right. see you there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Miss Rizzo, Miss underscore Rizzo on Instagram. What other socials and your blog or websites can you shout out so everyone can kind of follow you? Because you are Instagram famous, so people need to see you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Miss Rizzo, pretty much on all handles, YouTube, TikTok, and then I have my blog called the thetrendytravelco.com. Trendytravelco.com. Is it the thetrendytravelco.com or trendytravelco.com? Trendy Travel Co. All right. Perfect. Well... Thank you so much for <laughs> joining us and we'll have to have you back on after you go travel the world again. Yes. Thanks for having me. <laughs> All right. And uh, yeah, inspiretravelite.com, trendytravelco.com. This is the greatest travel podcast in the universe. <laughs>